So you very recently published a study that correlated the omega-3 index to all-cause mortality, right. was able to even predict uh, mortality. Right. Very, very interesting study. Um, I shared it on social media, but I would love to talk about oh. it. Yeah, yeah, sure. That was a, it's going to be probably one of my capstone studies, I think, and in, in, in hindsight. Um, it was a, a collaboration among 17 different cohorts, like, like the Framingham study is a cohort, Women's Health Initiatives, MESA, EPIC. These are all, uh, and, and from all around the world, these are groups that have been uh, recruited at one point in time, blood samples taken, uh, fatty acid levels measured in that blood, and then the investigators just follow this group of people over time to see what happens, what kind of diseases they get, you know, who gets, who dies, who doesn't. And so we had 17 of those pooled together and around 40, 45,000 people all together uh, where we had omega-3 levels at the beginning and then roughly um, the total follow-up time when you're, when you're looking at risk for death, all-cause mortality, uh, you obviously look in a given window of time. If you wait long enough, it's 100%. Everybody dies. So you can't wait forever. You got to wait. So, so we, we looked uh, basically between age 65 and 75. Who, who, who died in that window of time? And we found that the people that had the highest omega-3 levels compared to the lowest were 15% or so less likely to die over that time. And it was a very, when you look at quintiles of omega-3, it was very dose dependent. The higher the omega-3, the lower the risk. Uh, and that was for total mortality. Um, we then looked at cardiovascular mortality, cancer mortality, and then everything else. Kitchen sink. You know, if it's not cancer, not cardiovascular, it's group three. Uh, and we saw the same thing in all groups. It wasn't as strong in cancer. It wasn't as stair-steppy um, like it was in cardiovascular. Um, but the highest group in omega-3s uh, did have a significantly lower risk of death from cancer. Uh, but it, interesting to me is the non-cardiovascular, non-cancer, all these other causes of death from electrocution to suicide to car accidents to kidney failure, you know, everything people die of. Um, the higher the omega-3, just like cardiovascular, do, 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 lower risk. So there's something very systemic, very protective ac across many health, many systems in the body, many diseases, I think, are just held somewhat in check by having a higher omega-3. It's not just heart disease. I think that's the message to get out. It's not just heart disease. Right. Um, and this 15% decrease in all-cause mortality, was that about a five-year? Was it translated to about a five-year? We didn't, in that study, we didn't try to get at that, because uh, basically that meant if in that window of time, you were 15% less likely to die. Okay. How long you actually lived, we don't. We didn't follow people till they died all the time. Um, but in the f another study we published from Framingham, just one cohort, uh, we did see that there's roughly uh, a five-year difference. If you're at the very lowest omega-3 versus the highest, your your odds of dying are about five years earlier. Can you say again? So the omega-3 index for the lowest was was well, that probably under uh, under four percent. And it's for the upper level, roughly 7%. And this is, again, this is observational in framing, and nobody's supplementing. So we haven't got people, many people, over 8%. This is, you know, people living in Boston. And so they don't have high omega 3 levels. But the highest quartile, quintile, was about over 7, over 6, over 7%. You said the average in the United States was about 5. Uh, 5 ish. So 5 ish. And What's the average intake of fish in the, US, in the United States? Fish, well, what is it, 13 pounds per person per year. Um, and that's all fish. All and all, it, right, so that includes, you know, uh, shrimp, which has zero <laughs> omega-3, and, and uh, white fish, pollock, which is the fried fish that people get at McDonald's, and uh, salmon itself, which is the, one of the highest omega-3 fish, certainly the most, one of the highest that people actually eat. Um, you know, that's, that provides about 
one and a half grams per serving of omega-3. Uh, the average intake of EPA and DHA in America is something of 100 to 100, 150 milligrams a day. The median intake is zero. Okay. The average, because some people eat a lot and a whole lot of people eat none. Wow. You know, so the median is zero, at least to two decimal places. And, but the average intake is 100, say 120 milligrams a day. In Japan, it's roughly 900 milligrams a day. 900 milligrams. And I'll, for life, for minus nine months. Wow. They're on, I mean, because moms do yeah. it too, yeah. And they're, they, if I remember correctly, their average lifespan is about five years longer than the United States average. Right, right? despite the fact they smoke more, despite the fact they have more hypertension, Despite the fact they have higher stress life, they still live four or five years longer. Does omega-3, is it known that if it has any effect on smoking in terms of like negating some of the negative? <sighs> well, that's, in our most recent paper in Framingham, we asked the question, um, we're, we're, in general, we're trying to, to understand how much of a risk factor is omega-3 compared to things you already know for, for death. So we, we know cholesterol is a risk factor. We know blood pressure is a risk factor. We know diabetes is having diabetes. We know being a smoker is a risk factor for bad outcomes. So how does omega-3 compare to that? Um, and we found that in the study we did in Framingham, looking at all-cause mortality, that uh, if you're a smoker and you have a low omega-3, you, you're 50, you know, over the... 10 years of the study, you're 50-50 chance of living. You're going to die a 50% chance of dying. If you have a low omega-3 and you're a non-smoker, it's not so bad. Your, your risk of death maybe is 30% over that. Um, if you're a smoker and you have a high omega-3, that's the other flip side, but you're a smoker, your risk is kind of like having a low omega-3 and being a non-smoker. And then if you've Best case, you don't smoke and you have a high omega-3, your odds of dying are like 10%. So it's, in a way, having a low omega-3 is like being a smoker from a perspective. I don't mean to say that taking omega-3 erases your risk of being a smoker. Don't want people to think you can do that. <laughs> oh, oh, I keep smoking, I just take some fish oil, and I'm good. That's not, not the deal. We, we do know this, that smoking actually lowers the omega-3 index. Smokers have lower omega-3 index than non-smokers from other studies. And it could be because of the uh, hyper-oxidative state of a smoker's blood that could actually destroy omega-3s potentially. Right. Or they just don't eat fish oil, or they don't eat fish. That's the other explanation. Um, so the, the general... Uh, Attack of both of our, our study in nature communications on total mortality with our 17 cohorts and this latest one in uh, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in Framingham, uh, point to having a high omega-3 level is protective in, in the same sense that uh, having a low cholesterol is protective, in the same sense that having low blood pressure is protective. It's about the same predictive wow. value. Which and that's is, about 8% of omega-3 index around yeah, that's Yeah, again, if it's over 7 in, in over Framingham. Seven. Um, but in the, the pool analysis of those 17 cohorts, it was roughly about 7.8%. The highest quintile was about roughly about the 8% target. So we, we felt uh, that our original 2004 idea that 8% would be the target, which was based on much less data back then, um, has been vindicated. It continues to be vindicated. It's been seen that that 8%, it's not, it's not perfect. I mean, in Japan, you might, you actually get a additional re reduction in risk at 10% versus being at 8%. Okay, that's, that's good, but we're now going from this much risk to this much risk, yeah. you know. Well, that was gonna be my question too. Yeah. Like, what are we, what if we get up into a, you know, 10 to 12 to 13% omega index, is that even, it, I mean, it, it could be. Um, we at Omega Quant, we, we kind of say our target level is eight, eight to twelve, and it's not because above twelve is bad. It's because we just have so little data to know, just to 
to say that if you get to 14, you're better than you're at 12, or to even to say that you're 12, you're better than 10. We don't really know that. It's just a reasonable target level. Um, it's, it's safe. I'm not concerned about that. So, and it's tough enough for people just to get up to eight, never mind get up to 12. Uh, and so we, we're not um, trying to say anything above eight. As far as you can go, the higher the better. I, I don't know, I can't say that. I mean, there may be adverse effects that pop up somewhere out there. You would think, in theory, there could be. We just haven't seen them, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Hmm. So be conservative and just drive right.